All right, we're going to make a backer for my French lavender and silver mum. And I've got a five inch backer, about five and a half, I think, somewhere between five and five and a half. I'm going to make loops five inches long. Or I cut my ribbons five inches long because I want a little bit smaller loops. These are cut, oh, wait a minute, I think I cut these wrong. No, 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 okay. So some of these I cut at 12 inches, and I'm going to fold them in half. Those are going to be for twisted loops. So these 12 inch ones, I'm going to fold them in half and then make a twisted loop. So I got two different colors for that. Okay, now the silver, this is a two and a half, but this is not an acetate or a luster. This is like a floor ribbon. I don't even know what brand this is. That's a silver. No, it's a polypropylene. I don't remember where I got this, but I am. Uh, it does say Florentine right here. Florentine, two and a half by a hundred yards. So it's a thinner ribbon. It's not as thick. And I don't have the French lavender in this size. I only have it in the one and five sixteenths and the seven eighths for now. So. What I'm doing, I cut this at 10, if I didn't say that, 10 inches because I want them 5, because I'm folding it in half so it's thicker and you can see the silver on the inside as well. Now I'm going to layer it. With the lavender, the number 9 lavender, so this is number 40, this is number 9. This is 7 8, which is number 5 of the diamond dust. So this is how I'm going to layer them. No, I'm sorry. I'm forgetting what I'm doing. How many of these do I have? Yes, I am. Okay, I cut 8 of these. So I'm going to make 4 of these with this layered. And then I'm going to layer a smaller set of loops with... This is the luster, the silver gray luster. That's new. French lavender. I'm going to make a loop like this with the silver diamond dust again, seven eighths layered on it as well. And then I'm gonna have the twist loops. So that is my plan right now. I cut all these ribbons and then I can't remember what I cut what I cut what for. <laughs> I just started cutting ribbons like okay, yeah I'll do this. Yeah I'll do this. I am, actually I'm not going to center that. So I have different methods for layering these ribbons. If you were layering this light color on a dark one, you'd want to double it up. That way that French lavender stayed French lavender and not some other color. But you can layer them in the center, which you see a lot, or you can go off to one side and that gives you a little bit different look. And then something I came up with several years ago that I'd never seen anybody do, and I've seen several people do it since now, is just kind of attach it at an angle. And then you just kind of get this different look. So it's just some ways to um, change up the look a little bit. You do have to staple both sides when you do it that way though. All right, now we got to layer it that one. And I should have done that first. I forgot. See, I was busy talking and I forget what I'm trying to do. Just to make sure that's centered. I usually don't have this many staples on one loop, but it is what it is. And look how pretty that is. Okay. Put that one off to the side. I'm about to run out of staples too, and none of my staplers have staples on. Okay, fold that in half. And if you have trouble, you could uh, give it a, a staple right there in the middle, or you can just clip it and hold it down. So try not to go off the edge there. I just try to keep it on the ribbon and do it just a little bit. See, you can go off a little bit, but I try not to go too much off of there. 
and then get one of these. These tend to stick together, these diamond dusts, and I have accidentally used two together. Makes me so mad. Just a warning. Okay. Much better. Here we go. Look how pretty that is. I'm oh, so excited. I'm excited to get this mum together finished. This Florentine or polypropylene ribbon is real staticky too. It's like things just stick to it like crazy. leave one out for that one when it runs out. I'm going to go ahead and fill these up. Leave one of them right here. This one does not got it. Okay. I think it had a few in there and it just wasn't working. this. Sure that's not too. I need to get a five and a half inch flower out too and have it ready. I really like to have it ready before I need it. I really need to prep a bunch of flowers. Only problem is they wouldn't, if I prep a bunch of flowers, they won't fit in the drawers because they're barely fitting in there now. What would I do with them? I'm going to go ahead and do this one and then I'm going to grab a five and a half inch flower. So we need purple. And then if I did this correctly, see, those two were stuck together. I should have four more for that one. I did use my ribbon cutter for all of these except for this one. It will not work in the ribbon cutter. It's just a tad too wide. It's a little bit wider than like the luster acetate, just a tad, and which means it's just a tad too wide for the ribbon cutter. And since it's thin too, it just the sides mess up. So I can't use it in there. But all of these, and I messed up several pieces of this. It just kept getting in there and crunching. So a ribbon cutter is not perfect either. So just keep that in mind. Chanel stem, pull that off. Take the plastic off. Pull the back of that off plus the little label. Oh, I don't have my glue gun going. Okay. We'll get this started, but I'll have to wait to finish it. I like to go in from the back side. Make sure you leave those loose because it won't come through the middle if you don't. And then the way I've always done it is just tie a knot. I usually tie more than one because I feel like, especially if it's a small knot, you could still pull it through. This is the way I've been doing it for 10 years. It's worked for me. So do what works for you. I'm not saying you have to do this. And then I will put glue under there and shake it out, squeeze it so that knot doesn't show anymore. And then I'll even put a little bit of glue right there. But we're going to wait for that to heat up and we'll make some more of these looks. Okay, so I'm silver gray on the inside, lavender on the outside. Then we're just going to center that up. Make sure it's centered on both sides. 
give it a staple and a very simple loop. You can tell it's a little bit smaller because I made them five inches. I don't always go five inches with my five inch backers, but um, it depends on how big you're wanting to go and how many layers you're wanting to do. Here is, so you can see a little bit of the backer. So here's an idea of what you're going to get. So if you want them to stand out more, go ahead and do the six inches. I do both. I'm to put that over there. That one cut, that gray one cut a little bit more, a little bit longer for some reason. So did that one, weird. Just a little bit longer. So when you look on the inside, you can kind of see a silverish gray color. got four four now we're gonna do four twisted loops in the silver diamond dust and then four twisted loops like that now this is going to be doubled because we're folding it in half and that's going to be your doubled ribbon so you can either cut these at six inches long or you can do if you're going to do them the same color like me then you can do them at 12 and then fold them in half I do suggest you stick with the six inches it does make it easier for the twisted loops so you can do the twisted loops like this. You can curl that over a little bit, or you can also go like a little bit, you can go as loose or as wide as you want, however you like them. I usually do them like this, where they come to a point right here at the bottom. So they meet up with a point. And then sometimes I curl them over, sometimes I don't. So fold in half. We're gonna go down and under. I mean, down and under. Yeah, down towards me, up towards me. Down towards me, up towards me. And these, this ribbon is one and a half inch. It's a little bit wider than this ribbon. So these twisted loops are gonna be a little bit bigger than those. So down towards me, up towards me. I call them twisted loops because they're loops and they're twisted, twisted. Makes sense to me. I don't know what other mill makers call them because I never saw a name on them. And I just figured out, I saw them, and I just played around until I figured out how to make them. Like a lot of the homecoming mum stuff, I figured it out on my own. I don't know how other mum makers make these, if it's the same way, but that's how I do it. You do want to double your ribbons with these because you see both sides. So whether you do two colors or one, and if you're using a dark and a light, you want to double the, the light color and then you can do one of the other. So you'll do three layers if you're doing a light and a dark. I promise you will thank me for it. So you see that's just a little bit bigger. Loving these colors too. Can't wait to get this on my Etsy shop. There we go. Look at that. All these fun loops. Okay. Now I'm going to sort them again. I like to sort them out. So 
so I don't accidentally grab the wrong one. Works for me. Those together. Those will be, and then those will be last. Okay. So sometimes I will come in here, a smaller roll, line, center that up. It just helps guide you on where to attach your loops. All right, let's see. I like to put the flower in there. I like to go like this and say, okay, where do I want to put that? And center it up. Let's see. Look center to me. One in there for now. Okay. Now I know I could come over here and which one is that? Is it that one? Yeah, it's that one. I'm looking at my little dots and I'm trying to line them up just like this one is. And then I have to figure out how far off that is. Come in here like this and go, okay. Looks center to me. Want to make sure it's not wobbly that way. I think it looks straight to me. We'll see. And I always do, when I'm working in fours, I always do a north, south, east, and west. So north, south, east, and west, east, and west. <laughs> and it's easier to attach these because you look at these spaces. Again, look at the back side. I think it needs to come up a little bit. You can put your flower and say, okay, it's looking center to me. I'm going to go in just a little bit more. Again, I'm just doing one staple because if I have to pull one off, it would be so much easier. Let's put this to the side because I think this is ready to go. Again, I'm going to open this up and find that center, maybe. Should be easier to find that knot than what it is. Okay. Putting some glue underneath. Not a ton, just enough. Pulling that, shaking it out, which fluffs it up. And sometimes you got to pinch it too, especially if you're not putting anything in the center of the flower. You want to go like this and make sure you're covering that up. And I do like to add just a little bit around the other side too. Now, this will go off to the side and it'll be nice and ready to go when I get to that point. Okay, so here's my plan for this. Is to come in here with this. And then I'll come in here with this and with this in between. That is my plan. That little piece of ribbon does not want to let go. Where is it? I can see it in a shadow. It's just a little piece. I guess I lost it. I don't see it now. I want to center that up, and you can see just a little bit of backer between there, and that's okay. I'm actually going to go up just a little bit. I'm going to go out a little bit further than these two. pinched myself. I've been doing that a lot lately with my stapler. I don't remember ever doing that. And all of a sudden here lately I keep pinching myself with it.
And this one. Okay, let me put that in there and see how I'm loving it. And then we're going to come in with those twisted loops and that's going to cover up and make it look fuller. All right. Now I'm not really concerned about that only having one staple because some of these are on those as well. Like that one's stapled on top of there. And then when I come in here with these, that's going to cover up this big wide one even more. That You're just getting more and more layers of staples. Okay. Do I want a silver on that side? Or does it even matter? It does change up the looks just a little bit. Okay. Actually, see, cause you're doing, well that way you're still getting silver on silver. It don't matter. You're still getting the same, no matter what. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that one though first. Do it down a little bit so you can see these up under it. Again, you can put your flower in there and you can see where you're at. Make sure that you can see that twisted loop, but make sure your staples are gonna be all covered up. Now I'm gonna push that loop up and go underneath it with my stapler. And that one is out. Grab a new one. Put that one over there so I won't accidentally grab it. Okay, try that again. Go up. You're less likely to destroy your loops doing that. Now it's gonna get harder because like this one's on top of that one. Sometimes getting these twisted loops on is the hardest part. I'm gonna go with that one. Nope. So I'm gonna, see, you can't really push that one up because this one is on top of it. So I'm going to try to go between them. And that is pushing that one. Okay. Sometimes I'll even glue this, these on there if I'm having issues. isn't it? Okay. That one's the most difficult one because I'm coming through here and there's room, but as I'm trying to staple, I'm pushing this down. So just be as careful as you can. I don't like destroying my loops. Sometimes you can even come through here. These have such small, but if you need to come through here, get like um, something to cut this. Like I have an X-Acto knife. You could probably even cut it a little bit with a pair of scissors. And if you have these staplers, then this is really narrow. Try not to destroy it too much, but if you have to come in through here, I've done that plenty of times, do that. because This is gonna be covered up anyway. Your flower, if you make it, like if you mess this all up, your flower will move all around, so you're going to have to be careful and glue it in the center and make sure that you haven't, you know, make sure you don't glue the flower over to the right or over to the left or something. You'll be able to tell. So just be, be aware of that. If you do come through the center, you can tear that up. See, I'm trying to go over that, and it's pushing it and moving it. And like I said, these silver ones are bigger, so I'm going down just a little bit further because they are bigger. Now this one's going to be the fun one, the very last one, because there's so much stuff going on. Let's see if I can come through this way. See how that's kind of messing up. That's another reason why I like to double the loops. I'm going to mess that up. Now I'm going to go over the top. Sometimes you can go over the top and it's fine. But be careful because when you come in the side, especially with these thinner ones, you can crinkle them all up. 
but doubling them does help prevent that. Look how pretty that is. So sparkly. And look how full that looks. Perfect. Perfect size for that flower and everything. All right, now. What I normally do is just pull it off to one side. Again, if you've got a bigger hole or you've torn that up and you try to do this, it's going to make the flower go over to one side. So what I would do is make sure it's centered. Go ahead and glue underneath and press it down and let it set. And then you can go over here and you can glue this down. Now what I used to do a long time ago is I used to curl this all up in the center to like a big circle and I would glue all up under there but that was a lot and you had to hold it down and try to press it down and I just found that it's just fine doing it like this. I always do two and cut that off and I save these for the little little small mums like the really small ones. Fold that under now I like to come in here and glue underneath and even glue along the seam of that and then once that dries I will glue under the flower. Okay, so here's the base of it and I'm trying to remember did I add extra ribbons? No I did not. Sometimes I forget to do that, and that's not going to be fun. There's no place underneath. I can, I can do it there. Okay, I'm just taking a piece of diamond dust curling ribbon, folding it over. If you were doing several pieces, I would tie a knot in it. Now you can glue this if you need to, but I can fill the backer. I'm going to come in here like this. Still on the backer. Now that gives me a couple extra pieces for attaching other trinkets and of course trinkets can be glued on that as well. So I have a zigzag braid with diamond dust and I have blinged it up. I have this bling on here with a home trinket. I have a mirror ball. I have this pretty glitter ribbon. I think this is, I think that's a Hobby Lobby ribbon, but I've had it for a really long time. I don't know if you can still get it. Little cowbell with a little bow on it. Then this pretty military braid. And I like, I put it on where the back side is showing. I switch it up, especially if it's got a pretty ribbon. You can only see it on that side. I actually like the back side of a military braid better. <laughs> But I did some bling. I did this pretty blingy bow. It's got bling in the center. Let's put that back down. And then we have a Peyton braid. And this is the first time I've done a Peyton braid where it's straight down and it's not looped. And it wasn't easy figuring out the size. I made it a little short. So I added this cute bell on the bottom. And you see I tied a a bow in that and I glued it up there just glued the whole side of the bow and I made sure that it stuck it's on there good and then this pretty bow with a pearl button and then I did this bling going up this has diamond dust it's the same colors that I used on here oh I had this pretty ribbon on both sides that I think was Michael's. It's another ribbon I've had for a long time. I don't know if it's still available. So the daisy bling, then a star, because you know I'm just doing generic trinkets. So a mirror ball, a homecoming, and a star, and then two bells, two different kinds of bells, two pretty bows. I'm sure I'll add another bow. And all right, this should be good to go. These petals are messed up. I just want to pull all these petals up. And I want to make sure that these staples are covered. 
and I'll do it. I'll do like half or a third, depending on the size of the flower or the backer. Make sure you've got plenty of petals between you and your glue. And I'll switch it that way. And again, I'm not using a ton of glue, like I'm not oozing it in there. You don't want it oozing out everywhere. Just make sure everything's covered. Now we're going to push down. You can feel the warmth. You can feel the heat, but you want to make sure there's several petter, petals so you don't burn yourself. Okay, so I need to add some ribbon for ribbon necklace and a pin on. Here's what we're going to do here. I'm going to decide which way I like it. If I want these to be north, south, east, and west, or if I want the smaller ones to be north, south, east, and west. I also want to see how far, how far down I want to go because of this. Now, I am concerned about that, and I knew that was going to be a little bit of an issue. But I'm thinking, you know, I can put a bow there, cover that up somehow with bling or something. It does stick out a little bit. I actually usually like it like this rather than like this. To me, it's more boxy this way. But either way, I mean, I change it up. Every time I do it, I do it differently. And sometimes I do it just randomly on there so nothing is like straight and even. And that, I always like that too. I feel like I need to hold that over. Like cover that up somehow. Even if I add a bow later, it's like it needs something. It's sticking out way too far. So I'm going to pull on that ribbon a little bit. And then I'm going to fold that over. And actually, I'm going to put a staple in that. See if that looks any better. It does. It's not sticking out like it was. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it like that. And see, I can go down further and further up if I need to. Just however I feel like it needs to go. So I always hold it up. You can't see exactly what I'm doing. I'm sorry. But I do hold it up eye level and look at it. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a staple. I'm going to try to go under those loops. Make sure I'm not stapling anything I don't want to. And I know exactly where this is. It's where I want it to be. Now you can go in between those if you need to. Like I'm going in between those loops. Now, what I'm doing right now is just trying to keep it in place. Make sure everything's where I want it. Okay. Now I am going to push it up and get some glue under there. Careful about how much you do. careful every time you lay your mum down you have a risk of messing up those ribbons back there so try to be as careful as you can okay now I'm gonna go through here and staple this down I'm gonna turn it around and do the same thing over here if you already have your ribbon necklace and stuff attached sometimes I do when I get to this point just make sure that you're being careful and not stapling that down Plenty of staples. Stick it like down. It did kind of go on me a little bit. There. That's 
better. And you can see those staples are on this because I just used this little piece of chipboard to attach everything so my staples came through. I just got to make sure that I cover those up and I'll be good. I'm also going to come through here and put hot glue through here. And I am going to do some more staples. I'm going to try getting between those loops. Just make sure you're getting actually between some and not stapling any of them wonky. A lot of layers there and there is some of that thick stuff in in between so it's, I'm having a little bit of a hard time see I'm trying to make sure that I don't miss I could mess up that loop right there okay just make sure I got that good I think I'll go with the silver cut these the same. This is about eight inches. So I do these one of two ways. This is the pin on. I either do it like this or I do it like this and pin it on that way. And I think I'll do that this time. First, I put some glue and I'm going to glue those two pieces together like so. Then I'm going to glue that one as close to the center as I can and a little bit, I like to do it a little bit taller than the loops. Make sure that's centered. Okay. Ugh, the bow is sticky. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with some staples. That is good to go. All right, now these I cut either two separate pieces to tie together and at least 24 inches long, 24 to 36, however much you think you need. Or I do a loop on one side and then a long piece on this side to run through it and to pin together, which I think I'm gonna do. I haven't done one of those yet this year. So I'm doing a duplicate of this. It's a little bit smaller though. Again, I didn't measure it. So I'm doing this one off to the side Glue that down. Again, I'm going to staple. And you could go like this if you trying to get the good side only to show through there. But I will put some glue to try to um, cover that up too. I feel like I need to come in here. I don't know if I can get. Yeah, I can. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna come in here with a yard and I'm gonna double it. Now I'm gonna attach this side over here at an angle like that one. that. I 
attack it with staples again. Make sure you don't glue or staple that down. That's just too hard for me. I can't see what I'm doing. Now with these five and a half inch backers, actually they're, yeah, they're five and a half. They are a little bit thinner, so a lot of times I add two. That's gonna be perfect. Because you can feel the staples and I'm afraid that they will kind of work their way through. So a lot of these I've been doubling them up. Sometimes I'll even cut out some vinyl circles, like just permanent vinyl or regular vinyl. Um, you know, on my Cricut. And then attach that vinyl over it too to protect it. And a lot of times I'll do it in whatever color of mum. So it gives that splash of color on the back side. Again, I haven't done that in a little while. Kind of one of those things I have to pre-do. Have some of them made in advance. Because it's not something I want to do while I'm working on the mum. Oh, I hope I didn't go down too far. I may have gotten carried away there with that. These really don't have a front or a back. Some backers have a shiny slick side and a dull side. The dull side is the side you want to glue. You want the shiny side out. It's going to be a little bit more like, I don't want to say weatherproof, but it is going to protect a little bit more against sweat and stuff and moisture. And I like to keep that dot in there too. And for the, those of you that make local mums, I have a bunch of business cards and I have glued, like especially for the local ones, I've glued my business card like right there in the middle, make sure it's completely glued down, but not on the garters. I won't. I don't want them having my business card rubbing up against their arm. So only for the girls' mums. And I've even like stapled it or glued it to the very back of the mum because you know, so a lot of times these mums are a gift from the boyfriend to the girl or vice versa. And they have no idea who made their mom. They may not know you from Adam. So somebody's going to be asking, who made your mom? I have no idea. Well, there it is right there on the back. Now, I only do that for locals because I have, I now have a phone number that I associate with like my Etsy customers and stuff, a Google phone number. So I'm not giving out my home number to a bunch of people. And my business cards are old and they do have my home number on there. And they don't have my Etsy shop because it's really, these business cards are old and I got a ton of them. So I only use those for local ones. But that's just uh, an idea. And also like if the next year they're looking for a mum maker and they have no idea who made your made their mum and um you know because it was a gift from their boyfriend or vice versa or just a best friend or something they've got your number on the back of their their mum if they pull it down and look at it and they're like oh, i wish i knew who made my mom oh yeah there's a business card on it that's just an idea it does help kind of possibly give you another customer you can get business cards made up really cheap. You can make your own. Okay, I do not feel any staples, so I'm not gonna add another one. If I find some cute, I have a bunch of vinyl, like, you know, some of it's Dollar Tree vinyl and stuff, and that's another way to use that up, like the cheaper vinyl. If you don't want to use it on your mom, you can use it on the back. Give them a splash of color or something fun or glitter or something, as long as it's not something that's, you know, going to mess up their clothes, which I don't think there's any vinyl that would do that, but you never know. Okay, so we want to take this, and you can do this a couple of different ways. So they can come in here. On both sides. 
and tie a bow. It's kind of hard to do it when it's not actually on somebody. And actually, I would tie it in a knot before I did a bow, especially with the soft satin. It's really hard to do this without it being on. But something like that. And then it's on like that. Okay, TJ, calm down. I've got the safety pins. They're getting safety pins. We're going to put one in here. Ooh, that's, that's terrible. I hope they're not all like this. No. Okay. We're going to put one here. We're going to give them another one. These are just kind of flimsy. These came from Walmart. I've gotten some good ones from Walmart before. Okay, TJ, I'm going to give them three, okay? Calm down. I don't know if I can go through that or not. I want to go through it, so... It stays. I feel like it's going to come undone. Okay, they have three safety pins. I'm not giving them eight. I've got three. Three should hold them. Now I want to do one more bow because I've got to have an odd number of bows. Oh, and I didn't show you what the other way. The other way is just to go through that loop and then bring it up and pin the ends or pin this to that. Just pin them together. I know I've showed it that way before. So instead of tying a knot, you would just run it through both ends through there at the same, pull it over. Here, let me show you. Dang it. I can't explain it. Dang it, Connie. I need to say that more. Okay. Sure, it's straight. And then you just come through here. A little bit harder with two. I usually only do one unless I want it to be like tied in a bow. You can tie it off on there with just one, two, but it's not as easy. So you just come up through there and then you, and that's so long, you probably want to pin it like that. And then just give it a safety pin. You could safety pin it on the inside, like so. And I will heat seal the end of those. So that's kind of covered up. I have tried to find some safety pins that are like blinged up and stuff, but I just haven't found any. I do have a ribbon cutter too that works. Actually, I'm gonna use that. It's really great. We are memory keepers. It's really great for soft set. Just plug it in, turn it on. I usually do it a few times because I feel like it doesn't work unless I do it a few times. Now that is cut and it's sealed. It seals it really good. Sometimes it'll get stuck up there too. There's a wire. Now I'll turn that off and plug it. Really easy to use. And those are heat sealed, so they should not fray. Always heat seal your end. So if you don't have that, just use a lighter like I usually do. I gotta remember to get that thing out more and more so it's not a waste of money. Because I forget about it a lot. Okay, let me hold this up. This is, this is that silver metallic right there. This comes from Amazon. It is in my Amazon store. This you can only get at Christmas time. So when Sam's Club gets their Christmas ribbons, you can go check it out. They get a bunch of different silvers that are really pretty. This one I like that it's metallic and shiny. So I want to do a little bit bigger. 
I'm not going to make it yet, but I'm going to kind of give myself an idea of what I want to make. Loop-wise, let's see. Those loops, the biggest ones are about three. All right, I had to switch cameras. I don't know what it is about making bows, but every time I make a freaking bow, my camera either runs out of battery or it's full. And this one doesn't have a lot of space left on it. But I don't have much left to do on this one, so it's okay. All right, we're going to pull the wires out. We are wire pullers. We are strippers. Yes, Savannah, I said it. That was for Savannah and Christy. Alrighty, I don't remember how much I wanted for the tails, but we're going to go about seven inches. See how that works? I'm going to pinch it. Use a bow maker if you have one, if you don't know how to do this. Okay, I'm going to go six inches. Got that pinched. I like to twist the ribbon. That's how I was taught to do it. much better bows. Okay, I'm gonna go about five inches on this one and five inches and let's see. Okay, that's good. All right, I always do this. I don't have my Chanel stem ready. That's why it's good to have some hilo holders somewhere around really close. But look how pretty that is. But if, see, I did a pearl button there and I just glued that bling. It's like actually two pieces of bling glued together. I have this pretty purple. That would work with lavender too. I've used that on a purple one. Oh yeah, I like this one just like a crystal looking it's you can see it's one of those that I got from Walmart clearance okay so the reason why I like these because you just run your Chanel stem through it so they're nice and secure I feel like they're much more secure than gluing something on and then we're gonna come over here with that on top and then we're gonna take our Chanel stem I'm going to twist that really, really tight. The tighter you have it in the middle, the better your bow is going to look. Just my opinion. Now you can come up here in the flower and you know, glue that up in the flower a little bit. and I'm not going to mess with these loops that I'm letting them do what they do naturally that would be that would definitely cover up a flat one push that down from here how pretty is that do I need to bring you all closer oh yeah look at that that's much better okay so I'm just going between those two places can you see that I don't have my glasses on so I can't see I can see what I'm doing. I can't see the little screen on the camera. And I'm just going to push that between there. Let that set. I'm going to pretty these up. You can leave the wires if you want. And, um, you know, you can curl up the ends. I do that when I, the only time I leave a wire is if I'm going to leave long tails and I want to curl them up, you've got to leave the wire in. 
just a no that as it gets shipped or gets, you know, moved around and stuff, these are going to get all misshapen. So see how without the wires, they just bounce back. So you may want to teach them if, if it has wires, you may want to say if your bows get smushed and you're trying to fix them, just go in here with your fingers and do that. That seems to be doing really good. It's going to add a little bit more underneath. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So happy. I am super proud of this. I'm upset that it's dark outside and I can't get a picture of this and put it on Etsy right tonight. <laughs> I'm going to have to wait till tomorrow. All right. So that is it for this mom. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Uh, comment please be kind with those comments share subscribe all that good youtube -y stuff and thank you all so much for your support thanks for watching comment any questions um yeah i will catch you all on the next one and happy mom making happy crafting all right i just wanted to show it a little bit i got a ring light glowing on it so you can see it before i get it outside and get some good pictures of it there and I wanted to show you in an upright position what it looks like being worn. So I think it's got lots of bling, lots of sparkle. It's got this fun Peyton braid doing its fun wavy thing. So it's a minimum with a 12 inch skirt, but it's lots of fun. It's got three braids. Again, I did wide to 7 8, so that made wider braids. And it just I'm really fun. I'm really happy with this one. It's my first lavender mum, so I'm super excited to get this up.